Hello and welcome. Today we are going to discuss about how a mobile charger is working. A mobile charger with no PWM IC that is using an oscillator circuit. So first of all is the AC point 230 volt it is connected here. This is directly coming to a resistor. This is a fusible resistor that means if a high current flows through it then this fuse will burn out and this is NTC so in order to avoid a large flow of current at the initial time that means a surge current NTC is put that means a negative temperature coefficient that means as the as at the initial the temperature will be low so the current through it will be low as the temperature increases it will allow it to pass more current through it at the initial the current through it will be very low and this is an MOV that means if any surge voltage a, if any high voltage happens this will be short circuited and the fuse will burn out so this is the function of the MOV in order to avoid the switching effect come back to the line we are using this circuit this circuit is preventing the high switching frequency coming into the input side that is a common mode filter is here and this is class X capacitor and these are class Y capacitors in order to protect from the switching effects coming into the in and after that there is the bridge rectifier this is used to rectify the AC signal to a DC voltage after the rectification we will get around 320 voltage at DC at the output when the positive cycle comes of the of the 230 voltage this diode will be conduct the current will flow from this path through this capacitor through this diode to the negative side and when this side become positive the current will flow from the, through this diode through this capacitor through this capacitor to this negative side so we will get a around a 320 volt DC. Now this 320 volt is applied across the capacitor. This is applied to the primary of a transformer. One end of the primary of the transformer. And one point is connected through a resistor of high value. A, around a 1 me kilo ohm, mega ohm resistor. To the base of a transistor. So this point is a... 320 volt and this point is also 320 volt but there will be no current flow through primary of the core transformer unless there is the transistor is on for in order to own the transistor there need a base current if a base current flows through the transistor then only the transistor will be on and the current will flow through this to the ground this is connected to the other end of the transistor is connected through a resistor to the ground. This side is connected to another transistor. So a small current flows through from the base of the transistor. That means the electron flows from here through to the base to this. And correspondingly depending upon the beta. Usually the beta of this transistor is at low around 30 or 40. 40 times current will flow through this primary coil also so electron flow from through this path and a portion of electron beta times electron flow through this path also so due to the flow of current a magnetic field is created inside the core of the transformer this magnetic field also is linked with this auxiliary coil this is the auxiliary coil and the two coils are wound in the same direction so if as this end is positive this end is also positive at this point a positive voltage is appear so electron flow from this capacitor this plate to this point so as electron flow moves from this point electron has to come to this plate so the electron come from the base of the transistor so now 
the base has two current one from to this point from the base to through the resistor to the 320 volt plus side and through this side this is a low resistive path so more current will flow because of this auxiliary winding to the auxiliary winding so the base current increases at the initial time the base current is less because the base current is only due to this current now as the auxiliary has a voltage more current flows through this and the capacitor is now charging due to this current now the transistor is fully turned on earlier the transistor is not fully turned on because only there is the base current due to this through this resistor now it has two paths one is through through this and one is through this so it is now fully turned on now the current through the inductor is increasing like this in, in a linear way when this current reaches this maximum value the voltage at this point is around if we say that this transistor point point uh, 6 volt to ohm so when the current through this reaches maximum value the voltage is the resistor is selected in such a way that the voltage across this will be 0.6 volt when this will be 0.6 volt this transistor will be on now the emitter of the transistor is connected to ground so when this transistor is on this point becomes grounded zero so now the transistor the this point b will be at zero volt when this point will be at zero volt this transistor will be off when this transistor will be off now the energy is all, already saved in the core of the transformer this is not actually a transformer this is a coupled inductor now the energy is stored inside the core of the transformer now the polarity become reverse now this side become minus and this side become plus in the secondary winding the coil is bounded in the opposite direction so this side become plus when this side become plus this diode will conduct and charges this capacitor and we will get a voltage at the capacitor so at the initial time the switching is controlled by the current through it when maximum current will reach at this point this transistor will be on and off this transistor the transistor is on maximum current will begin to flow through this inductor and when it reaches maximum value this will off this transistor this transistor will be on for this time this much time at the initial time now how it is controlling the output voltage if we want a output voltage of 5 volts then from this point there is also another connection is there in order to give a voltage to the octocoupler we are using a diode and a capacitor when this side is plus this diode will be forward bias and charges this capacitor this charge is available at this point now when this point reaches at 5 volt this is a 4.2 volt sinner diode and inside the opto optocoupler there is an led usually the voltage of the led is around 0.8 volt now when this point reaches 5 volt this voltage 0.8 volt plus the voltage drop the rating of the sinner diode is 4.2 volt that will 5 volt this led will glow when this led will glow this base of the transistor gets current and this transistor will on when this transistor will on this voltage this plus voltage will come to this point that means this transistor is forward biased now when this transistor is forward biased this point is at ground this 
ground will be available at this point when this point is ground means this transistor is off that means when the voltage at this point is 5 volt this is on when this is on this will be this transistor is conducting like a switch and this is on now and this voltage is available to the base when this point is plus this transistor is on when this transistor is on this ground will be at this point and this will be off so it is controlling the voltage now how it is controlling the current as said earlier there is the current sensing resistor is there if more current flows through this inductor that then it will sense the that there is there is more current is flowing through it and this transistor is on during that time also and when this is on this point is will be grounded and again the transistor the main transistor will be off so this is giving voltage regulation and current regulation this is how an oscillator circuit is controlling the output voltage and the current using an optocoupler this is how a mobile charger is working without any pwm ic